I'm constantly asked by diesel four-wheel drive owners, which is the best upgrade to suit their diesel four-wheel drive? The chip, the exhaust system, is it safe? Do I really need an exhaust system fitted with my chip? Today I have a standard 79 series V8 diesel. I will be carrying out four different tests on the dyno and then real world testing by towing an MDC XT10 caravan weighing 1.7 tonne up and over the gateway bridge. What I want to show you is the differences that are achieved safely from carefully fitting a Roo Systems chip and exhaust package. Testing includes, well, the first one is in standard format, the second one with a chip only fitted, the third one with exhaust only fitted, and the fourth one with the exhaust and the custom tuned chip. Each test on the dyno wheel will measure horsepower and torque at the wheels, and more importantly, the air fuel ratios. And then when we get out on the road, we'll have time trials accelerating from 60 kilometers an hour to 80 kilometers an hour, and more importantly on this testing, exhaust temperatures. This is gonna be raw and to the point. No fluffy camera work to make it look pretty. Just real world figures and testing as it happens. Let's get into it. All right, we're gonna, in standard format, we're gonna see what horsepower, air fuel ratios, that the, uh, the big V8 pulls. Now, the reason we put them on a dyno, how a dyno works, it's, it's a, like a rolling road. We can simulate um, road conditions, we can simulate towing a caravan, we can simulate driving up like a, a mountain range, like a big hill with a caravan on the back. Um, what we do in a ramp is it holds the load and slowly releases that load till you can measure your horsepower, um, your torque, and also your fuel ratios throughout the whole rev range. You can see where your maximum power is, where your maximum torque is, and we're going to we can adjust the uh, the settings on chip or flash tuning uh, to suit different rev ranges and different styles of driving. Okay, so uh, let's give it a run. Loading it up now. It's releasing. The brake is releasing. Let it go through its whole rev range. Watching the graph until the power starts to dip off. Interesting, we got to about 350 degrees on the exhaust temps then, but I'll get more into exhaust temperatures uh, when we're out on the road testing with the trailer on the back. Okay, now it's time to hook up the van, take it out on the road and see what it does in the real world. Okay, so uh, here's our first test. Fourth gear, 60 kilometers an hour, just about to head up the gateway bridge. Once we start heading up, I will, I'll hit the stopwatch. So we get to 60, fourth gear, hitting the stopwatch, starting now. Foot to the floor, fourth gear. Exhaust temps, 350 degrees. We're slowly getting there, we're picking up. We're at four, just on 400 degrees. My foot is flat to the floor. We're sitting about 65 kilometers an hour. Exhaust temps are climbing to, that's about 420. Seventy kilometers an hour, four hundred and fifty degrees. And we are reaching eighty kilometers an hour just right at the very top, four hundred and fifty degrees. That's standard. Straight away, I can feel the difference. 
Uh, we're at 70 kilometers an hour already. Exhaust temps, 400 degrees. I actually need to change lanes because I'm catching up to a truck. I need to change another lane because I'm catching up to a truck, which is great. I need to keep changing lanes because I'm catching up to everybody. We are now at 80 kilometers an hour, 35 seconds. Exhaust temps, 500 degrees. Let's go back to the shop, get the exhaust system. Obviously this is our standard run, 134.7 horsepower. Uh, fuel ratios on this run, let's say we're about 18.5 uh, to 1 air fuel ratios. This is the exhaust only, 157.1. Leaner air fuel ratios is lower exhaust temperatures, which is better for the engine. The biggest killer of a diesel engine is high exhaust temperatures. Now let me show you this. Obviously we've got the chip only at 152.1. Now. The chip with the standard exhaust gave us better acceleration through low and mid range. But you can see here where we get to about 105 kilometers an hour in standard format and the chip only, with no high flow exhaust, it starts to die off. And with the exhaust only, we're sitting in the middle there of, of standard and chip only. I hope I'm not confusing you too much. There's a, there's a lot to take in here, but the exhaust only will allow the engine to breathe better, which means there's more exhaust gases leaving through the larger diameter exhaust, which is more air coming in through the intake. So it's leaning those fuel ratios right out, like we said to the, the 20 to ones. But it's allowing the engine to rev a lot cleaner. And you, we're actually, instead of dying off at 105, we're getting to 115. Okay, and Away we go. Straight away I can feel a little bit more. Well, straight away it's accelerating. When we did standard, it really wasn't accelerating until we got to the top of the hill. So we're now at 70, uh, 70 kilometers an hour. We are sitting at about 380 degrees on the exhaust temps. So there's definitely an improvement there. It's not huge. Like we saw by the, from the dyno results, the biggest improvement is at, is at top end. So we're just about at 80, we're at 400 degrees exhaust temperatures. Uh, running at 45 seconds. And we're about to hit 80. Okay, so at 55 seconds, 400 degrees. Right, well the chip and exhaust is now installed on the cruiser. We'll run up the dyno and see how we go. So here we have all four runs. Standard off the shelf, chip only, exhaust only, and chip and exhaust. What does that mean? Let's have a look. We've got 170 rear wheel horsepower out of the chip and exhaust together. We have our standard run. Remember at 18 and a half to one air fuel ratios. Now, we've added another 35.3 horsepower with the chip and the exhaust together. We're actually running leaner fuel fuel mixtures. Roughly about 19 to 1 air fuel ratio, so it's slightly leaner, but we've got 35 more horsepower at the wheels. Acceleration through the whole rev range. So this is the big test. The chip and exhaust is turned on. I'm in fourth gear. I'll wait till we get on the incline, so that's under the, the signs up here. I'll hit the stopwatch. 
and then we'll nail it. Okay, we are going now. Feel that straight away. We're at 70 already. Exhaust temps 350. And haven't even gone to 400 yet. We are now at 80. 24 seconds. So the myth has been busted. Is uh, an exhaust system, um, does it help? Absolutely it doesn't. Does it give you more horsepower and torque? Yes, it does. Does it lean out exhaust temperatures? Yes, it does. We've got the safer exhaust temperatures. We've got safer, leaner air fuel ratios. Um, our accel acceleration time, so our torque is coming in at a lot lower RPMs. Um, the drive that we have is, is phenomenal. We've done that in 24 seconds from 60 to 80, compared to the chip only uh, at 35 seconds. And we're running much leaner. So there's your answer, yes. Uh, a chip by itself, yes, gives you more horsepower. An exhaust by itself gives you more top end horsepower. A uh, chip and exhaust together, it's an all around fantastic package. The fuel economy is going to be much better because less pedal effort needed to achieve these speeds. Lower exhaust temperatures, so it's safer for towing, and running leaner air fuel ratios and lower exhaust temperatures than stock standard. Um, knocked over 30 seconds on that, that time trial.